Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about privacy problems with Zoom and what can be done about it and why open source is just a better way to go. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there's some affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services that we talk about on this channel. And Zoom. I've used Zoom quite a few times. I have been at the mercy many times of the tools that are available that work really well and had to use it because I was invited on a podcast or a YouTube channel and this is what they were using. I've used it myself for a while. It works really well. But when you can't figure out a business model or even when there is payment going in, frequently selling your data is a way they monetize all the things of the internet that you get for free or even pay uh, what seems like a really reasonable price for. Zoom is no exception to that. They've had a lot of problems. They've really, I was happy and I did report that they stepped up their game and are offering a lot of free services during the pandemic here, but that comes with the challenges of what are they doing in the background? It's all closed source, you can't see it. And they say, research groups say they're using shady techniques. News likes to grab onto things that can, you know, are very headline grabbing, Zoom being in the headlines. Well, it's very headline grabbing. And that's all I can really say about it. They're not really offering a solution to the problem. And I will point out the EFF has some good information on Zoom. Now, first thing is Zoom is not as end-to-end -end encrypted as people uh, think it is. And this is the first challenge, the privacy implications. There's an assumption of privacy that your conversation's private. Well, technically Zoom has access to it. So if I start a video conference with you, Zoom also becomes that third party. So is it end-to-end? -end? Not in a traditional sense of a very strong end-to-end -end encrypted product where only me and the person I'm talking to are involved. Zoom actually has the connection as well. Zoom has not been forthcoming about what they do with the data. This is where some of the problems come in. But their popularity is simply because it works so well. I will go a step further and say, you know, I think Zoom is probably still one of the good ones out there in terms of ease of use, ease of setup, easy for people to present and uh, get data around. But never you should assume that you should share very personal information. Now, this gets even more convoluted because they relax some of the HIPAA requirements for telemedicine and uh, Zoom is on the authorized list. But technically, you are not just sharing it with you and the medical professional that may be conferencing with you. If Zoom, depending on what they do with their privacy, well, they have someone watching it there. That's definitely an issue that is not really easy to address. So I still think Zoom is a pretty good product. But I will admit, is there something better? Yes, there is. And it's been a while since I really dove into Jitsi. I remember when it was a small project and it's become quite the big project and quite reliable. And we're gonna start with, is Jitsi free? Yes, but Tom, doesn't that just mean they're selling my data again? And no. So I wanna start there before we dive into what Jitsi is here. So Jitsi is a set of open source projects that allow you to easily build, deploy, secure video conferencing solutions. We are best known for our Jitsi Meet video conferencing platform, meet.jitsi, uh, where most, a, where you can host a Jitsi Meet instance for the community and the user can totally have free video conferencing with the Jitsi Video Bridge that provides multi-party video compatibilities. Is Jitsi free? Yes, it is. Jitsi is 100% open source, freely available and developed. We also run Jitsi.me as a free service. And of course, this means how do they get paid? You can't just run things for free. If you know how the internet works, servers cost money, especially things like this here. So how do, what funds all this? And I'll highlight this right here. We are fortunate that our friends at 8x8, 8x8 is another phone company, uses Jitsi technology for products like their virtual office. So they actually bundle this into a commercial product over at 8x8. By doing so, this is the free version that you can use on their website. So you can go here, start a video conference, and you're gonna notice there's not even a sign-in option at the top. So actually, there's a little bit of confusion some people have about Jitsi of, well, how does it work if I don't sign in and if they're not stealing my privacy? And we're gonna show you exactly how to start a Jitsi call. So we're gonna go here to start a call. I know, really challenging here. And we'll call it, it comes up with a stupid name for your meeting or you can come up with a stupid name here for your meeting and go. Now that's the name of my meeting. A stupid name here for your meeting. All right, I did it. You please note, they don't have any information on me. You can actually see behind the scenes at the studio what it looks like behind me too. So that's kind of cool. Um, that quickly, I can start it. I have, I can add a password because if I don't add a password, by the way, anyone who has this link up at the top here is going to be able to go meet.jitsi, a stupid name for your meeting, and they can join. But if I put a password on it, not everyone can join. So Jitsi works perfectly fine for this. It's probably weird seeing a delay uh, for how that works. But let's talk about feature-wise. View full screen, start a live stream. They support live 
streaming via YouTube. You can tie your YouTube account to this. Please note, I've tied nothing to this, so it's just gonna ask me, hey, would you like to do this? Once again, no privacy problems. What about screen sharing? Well, let's do that. So go over here and we can go to share your screen. We'll choose an application window and uh, let's see. We'll just choose, well, we can, that would be weird. Let's see what happens when we share this. Now that's fun. So yes, you can, and I can move the mouse and make it have fun. Yes, you can share your screen. I just had too many other things open. So I can do this without having to load any plugins. Please note, I loaded no software. I shared no information with Jitsi. I didn't do anything but turn it on, create a stupid meeting name and join. Then you can share it out to other people. So there's a lot more features that maybe I'll do a more in-depth video on Jitsi, but it's pretty easy to get started, pretty easy to start with the features. The fact is you don't have to load anything. The only thing that you didn't see me do because I've used it before was it asked to allow to use my webcam and microphone, which I said yes to get this meeting started. So it's a free product, but it's funded, therefore is not built on selling your data. It is also open source. And one of the things Jitsi has is the ability to build your own Jitsi server. If you're familiar with how to set up uh, server images, they have a lot of instructions on how to do this and you can build this within your own company, within your own hosting platforms and host it online and say, you know what? I don't trust Jitsi even though they're open source, but the source code's available. I don't trust them to host it. I want to host it all myself. Well. They give you that ability. Now you've eliminated it. I think more corporate companies should probably look into things like that. If they always have questions about these third parties and maybe what they're doing with it and they want to host it themselves because they have infrastructure or they you know, have the ability to spin up a cloud server. Um, this is something even when we've thought about doing is having our own Jitsi because then I can set up a, a Jitsi instance just for my company and I know it's well trusted, easy to do, requires no plugins and easy to um, get people started on without those weird privacy concerns and sign-ins and everything else. So I'm going to say Jitsi is probably one of my favorite alternatives to Zoom. It still doesn't have as many features as Zoom. I, you know, that's a little bit of a challenge. One of them that I really like is the way Zoom splits out and manages all the audio, but Jitsi does have the ability to record. They just happen to save it to Dropbox. But if you host your own instance, more options can become available. Um, so it does require some Dropbox, I believe is the only way you can save the meeting directly versus Zoom natively will save it to your computer. So there's always privacy concerns with any of these uh, places. I always just keep an open mind on them and a very much read all the details. I know no one really wants to read those terms and conditions, but no one should really be surprised that a private company that gives away a product for very low prices or even free in uh, many platforms has a bunch of privacy implications where they sell your data because monetizing the fact that you exist and what you do with your existence is pretty much a common business model with the internet right now. So always keep an open mind about that, but go ahead and check out Jitsi. I'll leave a link to it. It's a great product. Um, and you know, if you're just too concerned about Zoom, do it. Also, when you're transporting things on the internet and you're not as clear on the encryption, um, just use caution when you're doing it if you're if you're really unclear. I just bring it up a lot because people think, hey, look, it says it's encrypted. I see the padlock or I see the lock on there. Always double check, think about the platforms you're using. It's more about awareness than anything else. Be careful what you share, only if you really, really trust the platform and the encryption methods on there. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.